Hello everyone, this is Una McGurk here again with another update on what has been happening with regard to the EU Asylum and Migration Pact. Now, as you have probably heard, a motion tabled by the Rural Independent TDs was sadly defeated in a Doyle vote by 71 to 58 two days ago. The names of those who supported your concerns are in the Neil category and are listed in the description box below. So are the names of those in the Thaw category. Remember these names at the next election. It is important to know those politicians who are genuinely representative of the people and those who are not. The excellently drafted and reasonable request in the Rural Independent TD's motion essentially sought the following four matters. One, to not seek the approval of both houses of the Oireachtas for the EU Asylum and Migration Pact without first publishing the Attorney General's advice. Two, conducting an independent financial assessment of the financial burden on the state and taxpayers of opting into the pact. And three, committing to an open, fair, transparent national debate on the ramifications of the pact on our rights and sovereignty and the question of the necessity of a people's referendum. And four, to facilitate an informed debate without a guillotine in each house of the Oireachtas before any vote is cast. Now, you will be glad to know that much of what was contained in this motion mirrored the letters and the template letter which were sent by so many of you over the last two weeks. So your efforts were not in vain. And it is indeed significant that such a large number of TDs were supportive of your efforts. The rural independents and in particular deputies, Carol Nolan and Matty McGrath, must be commended for their valiant efforts on behalf of the Irish people and how they have shown respect for the true principle of representative democracy. Speaking from Leinster House, Deputy McGrath stated as follows, and I quote, in a calculated move to obscure the true implications of the pact, the government has blocked the publication of the Attorney General's advice, refused to conduct a financial assessment of the cost and denied the facilitation of an open, transparent, national level public debate before the required final vote in each House of the Oireachtas. End of quote. This vote also flies in the face of what was promised by the Taoiseach Simon Harris when he stated last week that we should have a debate. One would have to ask, what is this government afraid of if they had to vote against such a reasonable request? They need to know that not only are the Irish people watching, but the world is also watching. It is simply not good enough that a government can behave with such intransigence or act in such an unreasonable manner with so much potentially at stake. So where to now? It is essential that those 58 TDs pull together and find a way to challenge this decision, whether legally or otherwise. It is not sufficient simply to accept a vote in this vital area, as to do so is to simply accept defeat. They need to demonstrate that they mean business and that they will stand up to this government and their bully tactics. These are 58 very smart parliamentarians who need to put their heads together and take this government on. At least two of them are eminent lawyers, Deputy Ivana Bacic and Deputy Michael McNamara. They could muster the support of Senator Michael McDowell, who, whilst he was not involved in this latest vote, has previously stated, and I quote, this proposal has the effect of bringing into effectively Irish constitutional law obligations and surrendering of sovereignty rights of the most serious and far-reaching kind. And as an eminent jurist, he would certainly know all about that. Deputy McNamara recently also expressed concern about certain of the regulations and the fact that, unlike the European Parliament, the Irish Parliament will not have the opportunity to vote on the measures separately but would only have the opportunity to do so as a package, which is not satisfactory. You have all done an amazing job. Your pushback has secured the support of no less than 58 TDs who have now demonstrated their support for the Rural Independent TDs motion. It is now up to these qualified and well-resourced politicians to take action and to hold this government to account. Our sovereignty is at stake. Please take the time to tell them you have their names, write more letters, commend them for their good response to date, 
but remind them that accepting a vote is not enough. We demand that they take action now for the sake of our sovereignty. Let's see how well they respond this time. Thank you for your attention. Until next time, take good care.